The revelation about the 93-year-old's evening ritual emerged during filming of Secrets of the Royal Kitchen, a behind-the-scenes look at life at Windsor. At state banquets chefs prepare a minimum of four courses and the Queen will dine alongside hundreds of guests. But that is a far cry from the simpler food she enjoys most evenings as she and Prince Philip relax in front of their favorite shows. Despite having her pick of lavish dining rooms whether staying at Sandringham, Windsor, Balmoral or Buckingham Palace, the Queen instead chooses to eat her evening meal in the comfort of her own living room, with her meal balanced on a tray across her knee. Royal biographer Lady Colin Campbell explained, she has her dinner off at Ray looking at the television. She likes it. It's homely and cozy and it's comfortable. Many of the Queen's favorite shows are no longer on air, and she instead watches them on a huge DVD collection. They include The Bill, Keeping Up Appearances, Midsummer Murders, New Tricks, Last of the Summer Wine, and Doctor Who. The royal family spends about pound 1.6 million on food each year, which includes everything from formal dinners and garden parties to their cups of tea and breakfast cereal. But the documentary series, which began on Channel 5 last night, has gained access to the people who prepare and cook the royal platter. Capturing the precise preparations needed to cater both for a royal banquet and for feeding Britain's first family on a daily basis. Staff who worked in the royal kitchens reveal what really goes on behind the scenes. Before she sits down to her evening meal, the Queen enjoys her favorite tipple of gin and goubernet at 7 p.m. While Her Majesty may not cook her own meals, she does keep a careful eye on what's being served up in the royal household. Former royal chef Darren McCready said, All food is overseen by the Queen. The chef prepares three days of menus, which will give us enough time to get all the produce, and these are given to Her Majesty. The Queen then makes notes on the menu, crossing out dishes she does not want to eat and adding her own suggestions. One thing she is very particular about is seasonal fruit and vegetables. Darren joked, if you served the Queen strawberries in January, you would be sent to the Tower. The Channel 5 program also reveals the lengths to which kitchen staff go to ensure no one is able to poison the Queen at state banquets, with the chef preparing all the dishes before one plate is chosen at random to serve to her. The Queen is served a plate at random at state banquets in a bid to make sure she is not poisoned, according to a royal expert, and the monarch even has a code she uses with her chefs. Speaking in Secrets of the Royal Kitchen, which aired on Channel 5 tonight, Royal commentator Emily Andrews said, after everything is plated up, a page chooses at random one of the plates to be served to Her Majesty. So if anyone did want to poison the monarch they'd have to poison the whole lot. Royal chef Darren McGrady, who worked for the Queen for 15 years, revealed in the documentary that the Queen is given menus to choose what food is served at the palace. Mr. McGrady said, the chef does three days menus and that gives us enough time to get all the produce in and prepare it. When the menu book goes up to the Queen she puts a line through all the dishes she doesn't want. The Queen's former chef added that garlic is banned and Her Majesty does not like too much onion. Mr. McGrady said the Queen likes traditional British and French meals, while Prince Philip is more experimental. He said, very keen on eating game. The monarch often eats the same thing week in and week out. The Queen also apparently has a code she uses to communicate with royal chefs. Mr. McGrady said, if she's out for dinner she'll put a line through the page, and if she has a guest coming she'll put two or three, so we know she is entertaining. Earlier this year, the Queen was hiring a new palace chef. Her Majesty was on the hunt for a sous chef to be based at Buckingham Palace. Salary details were not included in the advert but the chef could expect a competitive package. The role had one big perk as the royal cook had the option to live in. As part of the job, the chef would also travel to other royal residences. The advert said the candidate must have a background in premier catering and be trained in classical French cuisine. It said, you're an experienced and qualified chef with a background in premier catering, looking to take on a new challenge. You'll have a thorough knowledge of the food industry and are trained in classical French cuisine, and you'll be confident planning and developing menus for a wide range of occasions, including volume catering. 
the job specification added, strong leadership skills will be absolutely vital. It's essential that you can plan, organize and delegate effectively, and also that you can motivate and develop those around you. With excellent communication skills, you'll have the ability to establish and maintain effective working relationships with your colleagues around the organization. It's also important that you can follow up-to-date catering legislative requirements. Above all, you'll be committed to achieving high standards every day, making you a real asset to the kitchen team. The hands-on royal role involved planning and developing menus for royal events, managing stock levels and helping the head chef run the kitchen. They would join an accomplished team delivering food to the highest standards.